So you guys can see this. If you let me know if you can't see the um, PowerPoint. So I'm looking at organ systems right now. Uh, we started this semester talking about atoms. Started the semester talking about atoms, and then um, then when you put atoms together, those make molecules, and then when you put molecules together, those make um, cells, and then now when you put cells together, those make tissues. That's what we're talking about today. And there's four different types of tissues in animals. By animals, I mean humans, but other animals too. So we have four different types of um, uh, tissues. So um, I'm going to go over each one, but it's it's epithelial, and that's like your skin, for example. So there's epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. Those are the four types of tissues. So tissues are groups of cells that kind of do the same thing. Right. So if you take like my skin, that's epithelial tissue, the lining of my um, like my cheek inside of my mouth, that's epithelial tissue, um, things like that. Um, so tissue is a group of cells. So just don't forget that. So tissue is a group of cells that kind of do the same thing. Um, and then when you get groups of tissues together, that makes a system. So for those of you going to start AMP1 in about a week and a half, you're going to start the semester with like a crash course through biology. Like they're going to do this class, but just in a couple of days, right? So that you're not going to have, you know, just kind of like a review, a quick review of biology, probably in one class, right? Um, you're going to talk about diffusion and this idea of homeostasis and and some things like that and then then you're going to talk about um today's lecture they're going to go over today's lecture again all right so um i think you're i think all of you have mr waddell he's going to go over um he's going to go over epithelial tissue muscle things like that connective then he's going to spend the rest of the semester going over four um Four systems. So AMP1 has these four at the bottom, nervous, integumentary, skeletal, and muscle. So you can be talking about like nervous, you know, brain, skin, bones, muscle. That's AMP1. And then AMP2 is all of the stuff up here from digestive down to reproductive. Some of these systems get um, concentrated on more than others. Like circulatory is a big one, so um, you know, and maybe you do, we don't spend so much time on reproductive, even though I mean all of these systems I guess could be important. But um, anyway, so AMP one is the four bottom systems. AMP two is the top four systems. So don't forget. For any of you guys going into like um, some kind of field like nursing or um, dental hygienist or something like that, these classes have um, AMP one and AMP two have um, expirations, right? They don't you keep they don't last forever. I mean, it's kind of like you know to be comfortable, you could say you've got three years to get into your program, right? Three three and a half years. After that, they might make you take it over again. I mean, it's, um, anyway, just keep it in mind. All right, let's go over all of this. This has nothing to do with anything. I just wanted to show this to you because on, um, on Monday, we're going to talk about the digestive system. And I wanted to show you, um, what it looks like inside. This is what the inside of your, um, small intestine looks like. The point of this slide was that form fits function. Things in our body are shaped according to the function that they do. So you, 
So inside your esophagus, so this is like a cutout of your intestine, right? It's like a slice of that tube, right? Your esophagus would not look like this. You, you see all these like little fingers. You would definitely not find that in your esophagus, right? But your esophagus doesn't really have a job. It just gets food from your mouth down to your stomach, right? This, your intestine absorbs stuff. And that's why you see all these little fingers because it's like it maximizes absorption. We'll talk about that later. This is like not part of your quiz for. I'm just um, – I saw the photo, so I'm like, okay, well, I, I, I want to talk about it. This is what I want to talk about. Okay, so we've got four types of tissue in um, mammals, I should say, not animals, um, in humans. Let's say that. Um, the first type is epithelial. So if you look at the top, you see epithelial. Um, if you're going into anything medical, do not forget this word. I promise you, you're going to see it over and over and over, and people aren't going to stop and explain to you the concept of epithelial tissue. So, so there's, first of all, what is epithelial tissue? <clears throat> um, the first thing that you could say about it, that you need to know about it, so you need to know this for the test. Uh, epithelial tissue is densely packed cells. So if you look on uh, uh, here, all these cells, the cells are all in pink, and then the purple is like the nucleus of the cell. All the cells are right next to each other. So they're right up on top of each other. So densely packed cells. The cells are connected to each other. That's not the case with some other tissues in the body. So epithelial tissue, all the cells, there's no space. Like there's no space between the cells in my skin, right? I mean, so um, that's what it is. You find epithelial tissue lining organs and covering surfaces. So by covering surfaces, I really... I'm, you know, I mostly am talking about the skin, but lining, the lining of anything in your body is epithelial tissue. So lining of your intestine, you know, to go back, if I were to say, well, you can't see them, but what kind of cells make all of this up? Epithelial. These are all, epi you can't see the cells, but they're all epithelial cells. Like, like, like tr all these fingers, like the cells that go around it are epithelial cells. So I could say right here, this is all epithelial tissue. But anyway, so epithelial tissue, dense, densely packed cells, lines, organs, cover surfaces. Most of the time, but not always, it's attached to something called a basement membrane. So if you look down here, you see I'm like circling the word. And it's like the white thing it's this well it's actually blue so it's just attached it's often attached to something called a basement membrane so just keep that in mind so there's three things to keep in mind when we're talking about epithelial tissue um densely packed cells number one number two lines organs cover surfaces number three uh, attached to a basement membrane so that's three things you need to know about epithelial tissue so you see up here, there's different kinds. So <clears throat> we, we categorize it based on two things. One, how many layers of cells do we have? Is it just one layer of cell? So if you look at these two in the middle, it's just one layer of cell. Or is it more than one layer? Actually, this, this one up here is, well, we'll talk about that one. Let's talk about these three. See, simple columnar, simple squamous, simple cuboidal. Simple, simple. They're, they're one layer only. If it's more than one layer, we call it stratified. That's it. Simple versus stratified. One layer versus many layers. If you were to guess what your skin is, if it's simple or stratified, so what would you guess? Does your skin have just one layer of cells? Does it have two layers, three, five? 
Stratify, definitely stratified. Definitely stratified. It's protecting your body. It's hundreds. It's hundreds. It's and then um so now we 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 can guess like how many layers of cells, but like let's guess now like the shape of the cells, because the cells have different shapes. They're um either they're shaped flat or they're shaped like a box, like a cube, hence the word cuboidal. So flat is like squashed. So we call it squamous or squamous. Some people say squamous. So squashed cells would be squamous. Cube looking cells would be cuboidal. Columnar look like a column, right? Like a rectangle. So we call them columnar. So that's it, the shape of the cells. So um, not that you have to know it, but if you were to guess the shape of the skin cells, what would you guess? I'll end up telling you. It's okay. You don't have to unmute yourself. They were all rhetorical. So your skin is stratified squamous or squamous. So it's many layers of flat cells, right? Because, I mean, it's your skin, and there's, like, hundreds of layers. Um, you don't need to make it thick. It's usually, like, thicker cells, like cuboidal or columnar. They're either absorbing things or they're making something. Like maybe you have like columnar cells that are making enzymes or hormones and they're, they're putting it out, right? Or cuboidal cells might be making hormones and like putting it out. So um, flat cells usually aren't doing that. They're just to give a layer. Um, what about your lungs? Let's think about like the lining of your lungs. Um, again, I'm going to tell you, but think about the lining of your lungs. Do you want lots of cells or a few cells? So you have to think about like the purpose of your lungs, right? Well, you breathe, right? So you, I'm breathing air, air is coming into my lungs. Okay. It goes into my lungs. Where does the air go after that? Does it just, that's it goes into my lungs and just stops. It's going to move into my blood. So I need to get the air from my lungs to my blood. So if we were to pick one of these six photos here that I need to move air across, maybe the simple squamous. And I mean, you know, you don't have to know all this. I'm just saying you, you will in the future. I'm just saying it's like, um, that's why the shapes are different, right? I don't want to try to move oxygen across this. It's too thick, or this one over here, it's too thick. Why have all these layers of cells? I'm trying to get oxygen from my lungs into my blood. One simple layer of squamous cells, that's it. But your skin, on the other hand, it protects you. So you want multiple hundreds of layers of cells. Um, you're going back to like this slide. It's these things, these are called villi. These villi are absorbing like vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. So I'm not, I'm guessing it wouldn't look like this. It's probably going to be a columnar shaped. So like something like that. Anyway, that's not the important thing. The important thing is um, we can, we call it simple or stratified. And then we go by the, um, by the shape. Squamous or flat, cube like a cube, columnars like a column. Look at this one in the upper left, because I know Steve's going to uh, – that'll be one thing he quizzes you on. Uh, Mr. Waddell's going to quiz you on this. So when we look at cells, like look at this bottom one, stratified columnar. When we look at cells, we always just look at the um, – I look at this line of nuclei, and that's very normal. That's what all scientists that deal with cells, that's what they do. They, they don't, we, we never look at the cells. It's just, it's too, the, the nucleus stains dark. So we've got like a dark looking circle and I wish we had labs so I can show you this stuff, but that's all we look at. It's all we ever look at. Right. So when, when I'm looking here, 
I'm like, I'm like, oh, three layers of cells. One, two, three, and then this white stuff, that's a different type of tissue, right? So I don't know why they put it in this slide, but I'm like, okay, this is stratified because I'm looking at three different layers of cells. Right? I'm not even noticing, by the way, if you look here, you notice that this one on the top, this top layer of cells, it's kind of, it's like a, it's like a, uh, sorry, it's like a column. Right, but the ones underneath it don't look like columns to me. They look more like cubes. Right. So a couple of things. One, it doesn't look exactly like a cube, right? But it looks more like a cube than than anything else. So I'm gonna say that these two bottom ones are cuboidal. But this top one, that's not a cube. It's definitely a column. So how do I call this tissue? We're going to call it by the top layer, whatever that top layer is, whatever that first layer is. So that's why it's called stratified columnar. If that top layer is column, we don't care about what's underneath. Because look at the squamous. Look at the stratified squamous, upper left here. Flat cell, flat cell, flat cell. So that's kind of an easier call. This one, this one's up here at the top, definitely squamous, squamous. But look at the one, look at the bottom layer. Those look like more like cubes, right? Those aren't necessarily squished. Those look more like squares. All right, so, but we go by the top one. And then here's like another thing. Well, what about this second to the bottom? You know, is, is that a square or is that squished? Who cares? Right? It's both. I mean, we could call it transitional. It's like, you don't... And, and no one's ever going to show you a photo and say, well, you know, what is this one in the middle? And then, you you know, it's like right on the line, like it's a judgment call, right? That's all it is. Like, so, you know, so we call this squamous because these cells at the top, they're flat. Right. And this is kind of like, this is like your skin. They're not pointing to the skin, but this is like your skin. You're the, the bottom layers of your dermal tissue are living and they're they're cubes and you know they're living and they're producing stuff but the top layers of your skin they're completely flat they're completely squamous they're dead they're not even living cells anymore right like i just scratched my hand because right now it itches because i thought about it and cells are just dropping everywhere right so um everything that you see on me with the exception of my eyeball is dead it's like the most interesting thing, like we're, we're dead, but we spend so much time with our appearance. And all of this, my hair, my skin, my lips, it's all fingernails. You're looking at all dead cells. You're looking at a dead organism. On the inside, not dead, but definitely dying. Definitely decaying. All right, anyway, um, so we go by that top layer. Uh, oh, look at this one on the upper left. Pseudo, so whenever you see pseudo in, in sciences, like biology, fake, right? Pseudo means fake. So it looks like it's stratified, but it's not. So when I look at this, because I'm only looking at the nucleus, I'm like looking across and I'm like, there's one layer. There's two layers, uh, but it fooled me. It's really not. All right, so um, just kind of keep that in your head. You know, there's only one place in your whole body that, like, I don't even know why we talk about this one, because it's the only place in your body that this type of tissue exists is in your throat. Look at these little hairs. So in this case, in your throat, you have little cilia little little hairs right and so what they do is like <clears throat> i just did it i cleared my throat when you're clearing your throat it's probably because of these cilia so the cilia push mucus and dust and stuff when you when you get it into your trachea your throat it pushes it up far enough so that you can cough it out 
And this is part of the problem. This is why people with emphysema, they'll, they're, they're, they're coughing because these cilia stop working. And so this stuff is dropping further down into the lungs. So anyway, um, I gave you a lot of information here, but you know, I keep, I kept wanting to talk about it because this is something that um, you're going to see over and over in AMP1 and AMP2. And then after that, when you're in your program, whatever it is, if you're going into dentistry and you're going to study teeth, epithelial, 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 it's, it doesn't matter what you're studying. Oh, I'm doing radiology. I'm going to be an x-ray tech. Epithelial. This is the type of tissue that they're always going to talk about. Um, yeah, so we call, we call, see how these cells are round? We call this a, um, just forgot the fucking name. <laughs> forgot the name. I keep saying cube. It's a follicle. I don't know why that name slipped my mind. I, I like to use it all the time. This is a follicle. So a follicle, or when you have like cells that are shaped like in a circular pattern. So like if I look at my thyroid gland, I'm going to see a bunch of these follicles. Or well, if you look at your ovaries, you're going to see ovarian follicles. All right. So anyway, takeaways from epithelial tissue. What do you need to know for the uh, quiz? I want you to know what it is. So if I were just to see you in the hallway, I'd be like, hey, wait, what, what's epithelial tissue? You should be able to say something. Oh, well, they're densely packed cells. You know, they're tightly packed. They're like apartments. Right? They're touching each other. Um, they line your organs, lining of your stomach, epithelial tissue. And they're often attached to a basement membrane. So you should be able to tell me that. You should know the difference between stratified and simple. And you should know the three shapes. Squashed, squamous. Cube, cuboidal. Shaped like a column, columnar. Any questions on epithelial tissue? Can't even see you guys. I don't even know if you're there. All right. I'm going to guess that you are. Yeah, here. Yeah, I'm here too. Appreciate it. There's some slides. I'm not going to test you on this. I'm just showing you. But what we do, what I do, I'm looking at the nu I'm looking at the nucleus. So I'm looking at all of these nuclei, and it's not this little dot. It's the whole thing. It's this whole oval. So I'm like columnar, right? I'm not looking at the cells. I can't see the cells, to be honest. I mean, I don't see the lines. Like, I can't tell where they are on this slide. But I'm looking at these nuclei, and they look, like, long. So I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's columnar. And I only see one of them. I don't see two. Whatever these darker things are in here, that's a different type of tissue. So, like, right where it gets darker, that's a different tissue. So that's, this looks like just like what it's saying, simple columnar. I'm looking here. I would never blame you guys if you didn't know what this was because it looks confusing. But the only thing that's really tipping me off is I'm looking up here at the top and I'm seeing these things that look like hairs. After you look, when you look at these things now, it's, it all looks like the same crap, right? But after you look at it for a while, you start to see what it is. But in the beginning, it's all going to look like bluish, purplish, pinkish, blah. That's normal. But I'm looking at like these little hairs on the top, and then that's how I know this, this is your throat. In fact, you see these big, see these big things? That's not a cell. That's actually a mucus gland. So that's holding mucus and putting it out because we've got to keep this thing wet. This is the lining of your 
uh, trachea can't keep it dry. You can't keep stuff in your body dry. It's going to brittle, you know, it'll whatever. You know what I'm saying, right? So you got to keep it moist. But <clears throat> we don't want too much. So you keep it moist with mucus. You don't want too much mucus here. So, you know, because it'll start, it's gravity. It's going to start falling down, right? So these little hairs are going to, like, push the extra mucus up. This is the cell. And, like, can I, like me, myself, can I tell what's going on here? No. No, I can't tell. It's pseudostratified. I mean, I don't know. All right. So no one, point is, no one's going to, like, come, come and make you know that. Um, Look at this one. This is easy. I mean, for me, but it's a, it's, it's a circle. So you see all these circles and then you like, there's a nucleus, there's a nucleus, there's a nucleus. So I can, well, let's look at this one here. So here's like, I can see a bunch of nuclei and actually you can make the cells out. Right. So I know that's a follicle. This is like an easy, you know, I can easily see that, 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 that these are follicles. Because they're like cells made and they're all in a you know, I know I'm spending too much time on this. Anyway, this is just FYI, right? So let me move on. So we did epithelial tissue. Let me move on to um, the next one, connective. So if epithelial tissue was apartments, connective tissue is the country. You have a house and a lot of space and another house and a lot of space in another house. So sparse cell population. Connective tissue, the definition, my definition that I'm saying right now, a sparse cell population, and it's scattered, these sparsely cells, the stuff in between the cells, we call it matrix, like the movie. We call it matrix. Space is called matrix because it's like some kind of space that we don't know what else to call it. So we call it space, right? Same thing between your cells. There's space in between your cells and we don't know what to call it. We call it matrix. The matrix is different for different tissues. But if you look here, you'll notice that it's extremely diverse. It's like bone like bone is connective tissue, but then look up here, we have like fat and we have blood. That's very different. Blood is very different from bone, obviously, right? I mean, blood is, is liquid and bone is solid. So, um, and then cartilage, which is kind of like neither or fat. Fat's kind of like this jelly type of whatever, right? But so, um, one of the things, and I'm, I'm pretty convinced of this, is that when we don't know how to classify a tissue, we throw it over into the connective tissue category. So if I go back here, right, and you ask me, well, what kind of tissue is this? Um, I'm like, well, that's epithelial tissue. That's easy because that's the lining. This is the lining of your intestine. So as soon as I thought of the word lining, I'm going epithelial, right, straight up epithelial. Then there's like right underneath it, between here and here, like you can't really see it, but there's like this, well, maybe you can see it here. See this line? I'm kind of following it with my pointer. That's a layer of muscle. You can't tell. You just, you know, don't worry about it. But then like students might ask me, well, what's this outside layer? I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't. It's, I'm, I'm going to say, and I'm going to be right. Oh, it's connective tissue. It's some kind of, this is what, this is what I'm going to say. It's some kind of connective tissue, right? And you'll find people saying that. It's just like, we don't want to think about exactly what it is. Is it dense? Is it like a tendon? Is it like fat? I don't know. It's connective tissue, right? So we just dismiss it and say connective tissue. But really, like strictly speaking, connective tissue is supposed to be sparse cell population, and there's an, what we call an extracellular matrix around it. <clears throat> extracellular meaning outside of the cells. So like if we take blood, here's the cells, right? You see red blood cells, white blood cells, 
there's like these little platelets. Then there's this color that's like this peach color. So it's all floating in plasma. So in this case, plasma's the matrix. It's plasma is pretty much water, right? So it's the, and you notice the cells are not, I know they're kind of like touching each other here, but they're not connected, right? They're, there's space between them and they're floating in matrix. If you look at bone, these dark, these dark, whatever lines, circle line going around, it looks like a tree trunk, doesn't it? So these line, these these dark spaces here that I'm pointing to, those are cells. Those are bone cells. Bone's a living tissue. It grows. It shrinks. It feels pain. Um, it's it's living. Like we think of bone as kind of this solid, non-moving thing. Ah, no bone. Bone grows, and it could shrink, and your body could um, – it could become porous, like with a bunch of holes in it. I mean, it, it could become more dense. It's, it's living. These cells are living. But the matrix, the thing that's around the cells, is hardened calcium. It's like minerals, calcium and phosphorus. It's not liquid like in blood. In blood, the matrix is water. In bone, the matrix is – Calcium. I'll oh, see. They're even labeling it matrix. The matrix is calcium, calcium phosphate. You don't have to know that part yet, but that's what it is. All right. So it's very diverse, though. So let's look at some of these. We've already talked about bone. Um, so bone looks like trees. We call that trees osteon, osteo, o s t e o means bone. Whenever you see osteo in a word, you have to think bone. Um, it's mineralized connective tissue. That's it. It's It's got a bunch of hardened minerals around it. That's all I'm going to say for now because you got a whole thing on it next semester. Adipose tissue is fat tissue. So we don't call fat cellulite. We call it, it's not even a thing. Cellulite is a, I think of cellulitis, which is a swelling. Um, so adipose tissue is fat. And they'll always, almost always call it adipose tissue in anatomy. So adipose tissue is fat. Yes, these cells are, they look pretty dense, don't they? So this is an example of like, it's not following, fat cells aren't following the rule that I just told you about. Like I just got done telling you, they're like houses with spaces in between them, like in the rural areas. These look more like apartments. So it's like, it's not what I said. Yeah, so I think people didn't know where to put fat. You know, fat's not muscle. Fat's definitely not the brain. Is it epithelial? No, because it doesn't cover and it doesn't line anything. Fat's not lining anything in your body. And it's certainly not covering you. It's not your – so, like, where do you put it? So we're going to put it over in the connective tissue area. But anyway, adipose tissue is connective tissue. That's all I'm going to say about it. All it does is hold fat. These are like the little nucleus been pushed over to the, to the edge. That's it. Adipose tissue is fat. Blood is blood. There's red blood cells. They carry um, oxygen, pretty much. White blood cells are going to be involved in your immune reaction. When you see these white blood cells, you what really all you can see on these is the nucleus. See, like this nucleus looks like a, I don't know, whatever, like a U. And this one looks like there's two pieces or whatever. That's white blood cells. You're looking at the nucleus here. They're involved in your immune system. You'll learn about them in A and P too. And then platelets aren't actually cells. They're like, it was one big cell that broke into a bunch of little pieces. 
So these little platelets, you know, like when you get a pinprick and you bleed for a minute, the platelets plug up the hole. So anyway, red blood cells, you're eventually going to have to know the name. They're called erythrocyte. So all these things are going to be called site. See, look, look here. It's called, they're calling these cells chondrocyte, C-Y-T-E. Site means cell. That's it. But all these cells, they're going to end with the word site. Um, just like a bone cell, right? It's not listed here. But if we were to guess what's the name of a bone cell, well, it's going to end with site. What do you guess is the first name? Osteo. So you're close, whatever you thought. Osteocyte. That's a bone cell. Anyway, adipose cell. What do we call that? Adipocyte. That's it. Anyway, back to blood. Erythro means red. Leuco means white. So you heard of leukemia, cancer of white blood cells. Leuco. Um, we call platelets when you see the word thrombo. Thrombo, you're thinking something about clots, blood clotting, something like that, right? So the word thrombo is always going to mean that. So they're called thrombocytes. Do you need to know that for the test? No. But you're going to need to know it in a couple of weeks anyway. All right, so blood cartilage. Um, cartilage is like your ear, right? It's, 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 it's tough tissue, but it's bendable tissue. Oh, let's talk about the reasons why. This next thing that I'm telling you about is a test question that I usually ask. Look over here. Or it's saying loose connective tissue. It's saying elastic fiber, particular fiber, collagen, collagenous fiber, which I'm going to call collagen fibers. All right, so there's three fibers that could be in your um, tissues, and here they are. So elastic fiber makes things, just as you think, elastic. So my skin starting to sag. The reason is elastic fibers. My body's not making elastic fibers why should it it's like the tree when the tree when winter's coming it stops making the pigments and the leaves start changing color and then the leaves die because why make the pigment you know it's like that with us like we're getting older you know why are we why do we need all that elastic fiber i shouldn't be hanging out at the bars you know, you need to throw in the towel at some point. I shouldn't be around high schools as a 50-year-old man. Sorry. Thinking of the governor of uh, New York. He's getting busted for kissing girls. Dude's like older than me. When you see your skin all wrinkle, it's a sign. Hang it up. It's over. You had a good run. Hopefully you knock some kids out, found love. Let it go at that point. Let the younger people have some, let them have their chance. No, but not us. We got to keep it going forever. No, I'm going to go out and buy a Corvette, get some sunglasses. Um, I know I'm talking nonsense. Elastic, elastic fibers. I have elastic in my ear, though. See, like I twist my ear and I let it go, and it goes right back to its shape, elastic, right? So that's easy enough. Collagen. I'm skipping down to collagen. Collagen fiber is also in my ear. That's why you can stick these huge earrings in it, and it doesn't break. So collagen makes things strong. So elastic makes things stretchy. Collagen makes things strong. And lastly, reticular. Reticular, um, let me go back to collagen for a second. 
collagen makes things strong, but not brittle. So it's like strong with some flexibility, right? So it's not like, um, I don't know. I always imagine like, you know, those carbon, no, I'm not thinking carbon fiber. Anyway, it's something that can bend, but it won't break. So super strong and it gives. So that's collagen, right? Reticular, um, reticular fibers join one tissue to another tissue, right? So if you take my nose, I've got different tissues going on. I've got skin. That's a tissue. It's, it's what kind of tissue is skin? It's a uh, epithelial tissue. I've got epithelial tissue. And then underneath that, I've got bone right here. And bone is what kind of tissue? I hope you're saying connective. Connective. Right here on the sides, I've got fat. Again, connective. It's adipose tissue right here. Bone right here. Skin. And there is a little bit of muscle in there, which is another type of tissue. So I've got different types of four different types of tissues going on in my nose. And in fact, I've got cartilage. There's cartilage in your nose. I don't know why I skipped that, right? So cartilage is another type of connective tissue. So lots of reticular fibers in my nose because I get you gotta hold all that different types of tissue together. How do we join the bone to the cartilage? How do we join it to the fat? So reticular fibers. All right. So when you hear the word reticular, you're thinking of joining tissues together so uh, those are three types of fibers not all um you don't have to have fi fibers in a connective tissue if we look at blood blood's liquid no need for fibers doesn't have to be elastic doesn't have to be hard it's not joining it's a liquid it's not joining to another tissue it's just flowing it's liquid so there's no fibers but if you look at cartilage, think about your ear again. It's elastic, right? Your ear is elastic. Your ear is tough. And at some places, your ear is joined. I mean, obviously, your ear is joined to your head. And, and there are some reticular fibers in cartilage. So you could find all three fibers in cartilage. If we go to bone, is your bone elastic? No. So no elastic fibers, right? You're, it's not... Bone's not – your bone doesn't twist and go back to its shape. So there's going to be no elastic. But collagen, absolutely. Collagen forms the foundation of bone. First, you lay down collagen. Just like when you pour cement in a foundation, you lay down that rebar. You put those metal bars, and then you pour the cement on top of it. That's what bone does. It lays down cartilage, then it pours – the, the um, calcium phosphorus stuff. We call it hydroxyapatite. It pours it on top, right? So some of these tissues have fibers. Some only have a couple. Some have none. You, don't ha you do not know at this point what needs to have what. You just need to know what the three are. So I'll ask you, what are the three fibers? And what do they do? You have to know elastic. Well, elastic is elastic. Do you have to know reticular joins one tissue to another? And you need to know collagen is for strength, you know, like a flexible strength. Fibrous connective tissue is like um, tendons and ligaments. Um, next, in AMP1, you'll study that, right? So when you're talking about um, joints and stuff, it's all fibrous connective tissue. Um, we don't really use the word loose connected tissue a lot. I don't know why it's on this slide. So, you know, you can, you can skip it. Um, fibrous connective tissue, sometimes we call it dense connective tissue. I mean, it's like massive amounts of, um, collagen fibers, right? And again, if we were in lab, I could show you these fibers, um, I don't know if uh, Mr. Waddell's going to have lab in the classroom. If he does, he'll show you. You know, you can, you can always Google stuff, too. Um, you know, the microscope's a, 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 a dying thing. Right? We don't, we're not going to use these microscopes 
in another five, ten years, right? It's they're they're finished. But you got to take your eyes and like stick it to this thing, and it, it's all computerized. It's all digital. Just take the slide and put it in this machine, and you just do it by your computer. So microscopes. It's all ending. Um, so connective tissue, that's the second type of tissue. I'm not going to spend nearly as much time on the next two. These are just slides. Oh, look, there's fibers, right? I, I see two fibers in here. I see these uh, elastic fibers, and they're dark. So they always stain dark. And then there's like this lighter these lighter fibers that are like purple, they're like purple lines, that's uh, collagen. Hope I'm right. Doesn't matter, does it? You're not gonna check me. Um, anyway, I know this all kind of looks the same, but here's adipose tissue. Oh, check this out right here. This is all FYI. This is a blood, this is a capillary. This is a blood, a blood capillary. It might even be, that's capillary. All right, so here's my question about this. Look right in the middle. See these dark dots? So there's dark, dark dots lining this. So that's the lining of your capillary. What kind of tissue is that? What kind of tissue lines your blood? And you Hopefully you said epithelial because I said the word lines, lining. As soon as I said lining, you're like epithelial. And this is all, you can't see it. What if I can go, I can't even zoom in on it. But there, there's, there's a lot of red blood cells in there. If you were to zoom in on it, you could see it. So this is all fat. It's empty. There's nothing in it. And then here's a, a blood capillary. Cartilage. Anyway, let me go to the third type. So I need to wrap this up. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Give me 10 minutes. I'm done. So let me wrap this up. Muscle. Muscle is your third type of tissue. There are three types of muscle. Skeletal, cardiac, smooth. Skeletal is voluntary. You control it. It's attached to your skeleton. It's the only muscle type that's really attached to your skeleton, and it's the only muscle type that you can control, so it's voluntary. The other two are involuntary. Cardiac is heart. That's it. It's your heart muscle. It, it, it looks like skeletal muscle, but there's some differences. We'll talk about it. And then smooth muscle lines your organs. For example, smooth muscle lines your stomach. Smooth muscle lines your intestine. It's not the lining, right? I shouldn't say the word lines. Um, what's lining this? Epithelial. But that layer I was pointing to underneath the epithelial right here, that's muscle. And, I mean, obviously you can't figure it out. I mean, you just have to kind of know it. I would never, you know, no one's going to expect you to know that that's muscle, but... There's a, there's a pattern that, that, that most of your organs follow, and that's and you'll learn that. It's usually epithelial is the lining, right? And then underneath it, you're going to have um, like maybe some kind of elastic or muscle. So often there's muscle. So if I'm talking about my, my esophagus or my stomach or my intestine lined with epithelial, and then underneath it, the next layer is muscle. And then if you go to the outer layer, connective tissue. That's kind of a general, generally how your organs are, right? So when you're hungry and you feel your stomach growl, that's your smooth muscle contracting in your stomach. It's like, hey, put food in me. This is what I usually do when you stick food in me and you haven't put any food in me, so I'm just going to contract anyway. So smooth muscle is found inside your organs involuntary you can't control it cardiac muscle involuntary obviously you're not you're not thinking about making your heart beat if you look at it it looks kind of like skeletal muscle so skeletal muscle you see how there's like red and white bands 
So we call this, we call these striations. Because when you look at it under a microscope, it'll look like kind of like wavy. Um, so you, what, what those are, that's a whole other thing that you're going to learn about. So, um, yeah, so what do I need you to know? Skeletal muscle um, attached to your skeleton is voluntary. Smooth muscle lines your organs. I'm making sure that none of you are texting me, telling me that I'm not on anymore. Cardiac muscle is your heart. Cardiac muscle, this is important for you to know because I might ask you, what is the difference between cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle? Give me two differences. Well, one difference you know already. Skeletal muscle is voluntary. Cardiac is not. Cardiac is involuntary. Cardiac muscles have an intercalated disc. What that means is it allows the, um, we call this electrical impulse, we call it an action potential. You know, like the spark in your nerves or the spark in your, that makes your heart, that's an action potential. So in your heart, when your heart beats, it has to, it, all those cells have to contract at the same time together. You know, there's no room for like error. Right, so um, they all got to go at once. So that's what the intercalated discs are for. It helps the um, the electrical impulse go from one cell to another cell to another cell really quick. All right, I'm going to stop muscle there, and I need about one minute for the last one. So this is muscle. That's your third type of tissue: epithelial connective muscle. Fourth is um, I'm going to skip over that. Fourth is nervous. I'm hardly going to tell you anything about nervous tissue because you got a whole thing about it in AMP1. This is a neuron. So this is a nervous tissue cell. It's made up of three parts. If you didn't write these names down, I'm posting a second video where oh, and I'm about out of battery too. I'm posting a second video where I'm putting the name. So you'll see two videos on this. One is this, is this class video. The other one is a, um, a video that I made in um, some program. Just watch both, right? The other video gives these names. This is the body of the cell of the neuron. Some of, see these things coming out of it? Some of them are called axons. Some of them are called dendrites. I'm going to find you a better picture of it. And if you get shut off, it's because my battery turned off. Because I'm talking too much. Let me look up on the internet. Try to find you a better photo. Yeah. Like this. Good old Wikipedia. Your teachers always tell you, don't go to Wikipedia. Why? It's got all the information. Go to Wikipedia. Don't copy from Wikipedia on your test. Some of these are axons. Some of these are dendrites. So the signal comes through the, through the dendrite. It goes into the dendrite. It travels through. Then the signal goes out the axon. And then you see there's like a space. Well, they're calling it here a synaptic terminal. It's called a synapse, like a space. There's like a space between one of these cells and another cell. And so the electrical impulse gets to the end of the axon, and then it jumps across to the next dendrite. What do I need you to know for the test? What is nervous tissue made from? Neurons, N-E-U-R-O-N. What are the three parts of a neuron? Axon, dendrite, cell body. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm at 4% on my computer and I should have ended like 10 minutes ago. Does anybody have any questions? It's okay if you don't. I'm going to stop. Yeah, so if you do, just unmute.